a biomechanical analysis of the standing volleyball float serve, torque and power concepts. To quickly review, the standing float serve is a closed skill. Volleyball players have the option prior to the serve on deciding to initiate the feed or throw as well as when to make the connection. Nathiel states that what differentiates this style of serve as opposed to other serves like the topspin serve is how the contact of the ball is made and the trajectory. When the ball is served, the volleyball will deviate and alter its direction mid-flight, making it at times difficult for the opposing player to read the ball's trajectory and making this serve an unpredictable component of the game. In this video by Guy Pistone from Fittivity, the volleyball athlete demonstrates the standing overhand float serve. Looking at this technique, you can see that there are five phases of the float serve. However, let's look more closely at the concept of torque within the float serve during the acceleration phase. Blazovic defines torque or moment of force as the result of force acting at a distance from the center of rotation. The still image here shows where torque occurs. Torque is needed through the torso, hips, and shoulders to successfully serve the ball to the opponent. It's important to note that greater force from the float serve will result and a greater torque. Therefore, increasing the force will increase the amount of rotation. In order to serve the ball with power and speed over the net, torque is needed and rotation needs to occur. High shoulder forces and torque are generated in the floating serve. Charles Labos et al. states that in order to maximize the float serve, the volleyball player must create a long lever. By doing so, greater distance between the axis of rotation, or the shoulder, and the point of contact, or the hand, is created, which will allow for a higher rate of ball velocity. In conclusion, the longer the arm, the higher the chance of, uh, for increasing the distance between the muscle and the joint, which will result in the arm being able to apply a greater amount of torque on the ball. The next concept to mention in this video will be work and power concepts in relation to the float serve skill. By definition, work is when a force is applied to an object and it moves that object in the direction that the force is applied. In this case, the force is the player and the object is the volleyball. The ball moves in the direction that the force is being applied to. As the animated image here shows, the projectile force of the player moves the ball in a parabolic trajectory. For many new players, it is difficult to time getting under the ball with swinging their arm to create maximum amount of force. Players often believe that they will hit the ball too late and end up hitting the ball too early before their arm fully flexes and can provide the serve with the force necessary to get the ball over the net. The angle of the elbow during the serve helps to load the arm properly and determine where the ball will travel. Loading the arm from below reduces the pushing movement and will not allow the server to properly move the ball. Loading the elbow from above the shoulder will allow the athlete to hit the ball and push it over the net. Power is very important in volleyball because maximum power is desired to have the most force behind a majority of actions in the sport, like the float serve. Power can be defined as the time rate at which work is done. By increasing the velocity or force of the float serve, power will increase. An example of a powerful float serve would be like this animated image. The volleyball player maximizes her power serve by forcefully striking the volleyball with her palm. The arm swing has the most effect on the power which the ball possesses. The faster you swing your arms, the more power is supplied to the ball. Repetitive serves, hits, and sets can put quite a strain on your shoulders. Placing too much stress on the shoulder joint causes the joint to pull the shoulders forward and round them over. If not corrected and strengthened, the shoulder is not able to move efficiently and aid in the swinging motion, reducing the power output on the ball. Another common error in the float serve is keeping the hitting arm straight when serving the ball. Serving with a straight elbow will decrease the power output because the arm cannot properly load. This can also lead to injury. The next concept that we will look at in the float serve is energy. Blasevic states that energy can be either metabolic or mechanical. For this case, we will look at mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is energy associated with an object's movement or kinetic energy and its position or potential energy. Let's look closely at the still images when kinetic and potential energy occurs within the float serve. On the far left, 
the athlete holding the volleyball has gravitational potential energy because the gravity is keeping it in the athlete's hand and the ball is not yet moving. The image in the middle shows the athlete has now thrown the volleyball into the air, making the ball have kinetic energy. The image to the far right now shows potential energy as the ball has reached the highest point on its journey into the air. Here it stops for a split second before it drops again. Now on the far left, the ball has already reached the highest point and is now dropping back towards the ground. Here the ball has kinetic energy as it falls. The image to the right shows the athlete hitting the ball, giving off its potential and kinetic energy to form the forward step and cocking back the hitting arm, transferring the kinetic energy as the ball is projected to the other side of the court. During a standing float serve, the potential and kinetic energy of the ball depend on the technique of serving and metabolic energy, which may be lacking due to the fatigue. If the ball is not served high enough, the potential and kinetic energy of the hitting arm cannot be maximized because it has to alter its form to, of technique to hit the ball properly in the middle of the palm. Next, we'll look at collisions. There are three types of collisions. First is the perfectly inelastic collision, where two objects stick together and move with the same velocity after colliding. The second is an elastic collision, where the total momentum and total kinetic energy remain constant. The third is an inelastic collision where two objects deform during the collision, making the total kinetic energy decrease and the objects move separately after the collision. Inelastic collisions occur during volleyball. When you think about it, collisions are always happening in volleyball. Anytime the ball comes in contact with an athlete, there is a collision. When the ball hits an athlete's arm, the ball and the arm are momentarily deformed before the ball bounces off. This interaction happens any time the collision happens. Like many cases, musculoskeletal injuries occur as a result of one object impacting another. In the game of volleyball, a serve is a critical component of the game. It sets the tone of the match with its powerful and skillful hits. As you can imagine, time after time of repetitive hits of the palm of the athlete's hand can cause some trauma. Although no cases have been reported, in theory, an athlete can develop a condition like myositis ossificans on the palm of the hand due to repetitive forceful trauma from hitting the ball. Kasuma, Lori, and Linz describe myositis ossificans as a conditioning where the bone tissues from inside the muscle of the hand due to the traumatic and repetitive injuries.